Dr. Mendoza worked to save Eby until mid-1952 when Eby died. Dr. Mendoza eventually, according to the information that I read, became the expert on at least this type alien biology. In a futile attempt to save Eby and to try and gain favor with this technological superior alien race, the United States began broadcasting a call for help early in 1952 into the vast regions of space. If you know they're better than you, and if you know they can lick you, you better try and be friends with them, and that's what this effort was all about. The call went unanswered, but the project continued as an effort of good faith. President Truman created the super-secret National Security Agency by secret executive order on November 4, 1952, and until recent years, there wasn't one in 50,000 people in the United States who even knew it existed. Its primary purpose was to decipher the alien communications and language and establish a dialogue with the, nation, with the aliens. This most urgent task was a continuation of the earlier effort and was codenamed SIGMA. The secondary purpose of the NSA was to monitor all communications and emissions from any and all devices worldwide for the purpose of gathering intelligence, both human and alien, and to contain the secret of the alien presence. Project Sigma, ladies and gentlemen, was extremely successful. The NSA also maintains communications with the Luna base and other secret space programs. By executive order, the NSA is exempt from all laws which do not specifically name the NSA in the text of the law as being subject to that law. How many of you know what that means? That means we have a completely lawless organization running around the country doing whatever they want to do, answering to no one, and under no law which does not name the National Security Agency in the text of that law as specifically being subject to that law by executive order of the President of the United States. That means that if the agency is not spelled out in the text of any and every law passed by the Congress, it is not subject to that or those laws. The NSA now performs many other duties and in fact is the premier agency within the intelligence community. Today the NSA receives 75% of the monies allotted to the intelligence community. And the old sayings, ladies and gentlemen, where the money goes, therein the power resides, is absolutely true. The DCI today is mainly a figurehead. He is in charge of the CIA. The CIA does have many functions which are useful to this country and some which are deadly to us. The DCI, of course, is in charge of that agency. But he is not, as everyone thinks, the head of the intelligence community. That position really and truthfully lies with the director of the National Security Agency. The primary task of the NSA is still alien communications, but now includes other alien projects as well. President Truman had been keeping our allies, including the Soviet Union, informed of the developing alien problem since the Roswell recovery. This had been done in case the aliens turned out to be a threat to the human race and thus the world. Plans were formulated to defend the Earth in case of invasion. These were international plans, which included most of the countries of the world. Great difficulty, however, was encountered in maintaining international secrecy. It was decided that an outside group was necessary to coordinate and control international efforts in order to hide the secret from the normal scrutiny of governments by the press. The result was the formation of a secret society which became known as the Bilderbergers. The headquarters of this group is in Geneva, Switzerland. The Bilderbergers evolved into a secret world government that now controls everything. The United Nations was then and is now an international joke. In 1953, a new president occupied the White House. He was a man used to a structured staff organization with a chain of command. His method was to delegate authority and rule by committee. He made major decisions, but only when his advisors were unable to come to consensus, and when he was in the Army, he was known as the diplomat. 
He was very good at what he did. He was very good at bringing people together, reaching consensus, and getting people to work for him. His normal method was to read through or listen to several alternatives and then approve one. Those who worked closely with him have stated that his favorite comment was, just do whatever it takes. Now here's a man very different from President Truman. He spent a lot of time on the golf course. This was not all, all unusual for a man who had been career army with the ultimate position of Supreme Allied Commander during the war, a post which carried five stars along with it. In fact, he deserved it. This president was General of the Army Dwight David Eisenhower. During his first year in office, 1953, at least 10 more crash disks were recovered along with 26 dead and four live aliens. One of the four live aliens died within hours of being removed from the craft. The others died approximately three or four days later. Of the ten, four were found in Arizona, two in Texas, one in New Mexico, one in Louisiana, one in Montana, and one in South Africa. And there were hundreds of sightings. Why were so many craft crashing? Because the government was scared. And when they found out that the radar was downing the craft, they started aiming the radar at the craft with lock-on radar and pump the juice through. And they brought as many down as they could. Eisenhower knew that he had to wrestle and beat the alien problem. He knew that he could not do it by revealing the secret to the Congress because, in fact, isn't that the same as telling the public? Early in 1953, the new president turned to his friend and fellow member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Nelson Rockefeller, for help with the alien problem. Eisenhower and Rockefeller began planning the secret structure of alien task supervision, which was to become a reality within one year. The idea for MJ-12 was thus born. It was Nelson's uncle Winthrop Aldrich who had been crucial in convincing Eisenhower to even run for president. The whole Rockefeller family, and with them, the Rockefeller Empire, had solidly backed Eisenhower. Asking Rockefeller for help with the alien problem was to be the biggest mistake Eisenhower ever made for the future of the United States and most probably all of humanity, as you will soon see. What he literally did with this act, ladies and gentlemen, is abdicate the presidency to a secret group. Within one week of Eisenhower's election, he had appointed Nelson Rockefeller chairman of a presidential advisory committee on government organization. Rockefeller was responsible for planning the reorganization of the government. New Deal programs went into one single cabinet position called the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. When the Congress approved the new cabinet position in April of 1953, Nelson was named to the post of undersecretary to Ovita Culp Hobby. In 1953, also, astronomers discovered large objects in space which were moving toward the Earth, and it was first believed that they were asteroids. However, if you know much about astronomy, you know that you can predict or project or project backward orbital paths of bodies in space and determine where they come from, what they're doing, where they're going, and what their orbital path really is. Well, this failed to pan out, and the evidence proved that the objects could only be spaceships intelligently guided. In 